recent news, a member of the Economic Freedom Fighters, or EFF, was expelled following a social media incident in which the individual allegedly made insulting comments directed at party leader Julius Malima. The expelled member, who was also part of the EFF student branch, the Economic Freedom Fighters Student Command, shared statements suggesting that this was not simply a disciplinary action but also part of a larger issue of suppressing differences within the party. He claimed that the only reason for his expulsion was a disagreement with the leadership, not an act of ill-discipline. According to him, the party's approach to democratic centralism has transformed into what he describes as a dictatorship of the dominant faction. This unfolding scenario offers insight into the EFF's internal structure and raises questions about the balance the party strikes between maintaining unity and allowing open dialogue. Founded in 2013, the EFF has made a powerful mark on South African politics, representing a bold, vocal stance on economic justice and land redistribution. Under the leadership of Julius Malima, the EFF has become known for its strong central authority and cohesive ideological front. The party operates on the principle of democratic centralism, which is a model of organizational structure that prioritizes strict adherence to the party's central decisions. It's a system designed to unify party members under a single ideological direction and is practiced in many parties with strong centralized leadership. In the EFF, this approach means that once a decision has been made, all members are expected to support it publicly, even if they had opposed it privately during discussions. The goal of this model is to prevent factionalism and create a united front. However, critics have long pointed out that this form of leadership can create an environment where dissenting voices are often suppressed, leaving little room for diverse perspectives. In this recent incident, the expelled member's response suggests that he feels the EFF's leadership has little tolerance for any form of disagreement. He claims his expulsion was not due to any disrespect or disloyalty, but rather, simply because he had a differing view from the leadership. To him, this represents an unhealthy level of control within the party, where differences in perspective are labeled as insubordination. This incident highlights a potential downside to the EFF's leadership model, as it may limit the space for open dialogue among members. Supporters of the EFF's current structure argue that strong, centralized leadership is critical for maintaining the party's message and that respect for leadership decisions is essential to keep the party focused on its core mission of economic transformation. They believe that allowing too much internal debate could fracture the party and distract from its goals. However, others see the recent expulsion as a sign of an environment that may alienate members, particularly younger voices who want to be able to share their ideas without fear of reprisal. The EFF has a reputation for prioritizing unity and discipline. Julius Malima has frequently emphasized that the party is committed to its ideology and its mission to bring about economic justice for the marginalized majority in South Africa. Many supporters view Malima's approach as necessary, especially in a political landscape where the party faces opposition. This approach is seen as ensuring that all members work in alignment toward the party's broader goals. However, the question remains, how can a party like the EFF navigate the need for both unity and openness? With this recent expulsion, the EFF is in a position where it may need to reevaluate how it treats internal disagreements, especially given the rapid growth of its membership and the presence of a strong youth base that brings fresh ideas to the table. This incident has also triggered various reactions on social media, with supporters and critics both expressing their views. Some have sided with the leadership's decision, suggesting that anyone who cannot align with the party's goals should find a different political space. They argue that a firm hand is necessary to maintain the EFF's identity and strength as a political force. Others, however, have voiced concern that this approach could lead to a loss of talent and innovative ideas within the party, as young and passionate members may feel unable to share their perspectives without fear of being penalized. For some, 
the expulsion represents a larger issue of how the EFF and other similar political movements can handle internal criticism while still pursuing unity. The timing of this incident is significant as well. The EFF's National People's Assembly, a major event where party policies and leadership roles are discussed, is scheduled for December. This assembly could bring more discussions on how the party should address dissenting opinions and maintain cohesion without pushing away members who might have different ideas on how to achieve the party's goals. In political environments where democratic centralism is practiced, the challenge is often to balance unity with inclusiveness. For the EFF, the upcoming assembly may be an opportunity to explore whether any adjustments in policy or communication are needed to make space for varied voices within the organization. What's at stake here is the long-term unity and appeal of the EFF, especially as it tries to attract young members who bring fresh energy and viewpoints to the party. If the EFF wishes to continue expanding its influence, especially among the youth of South Africa, it may need to consider how to incorporate diverse ideas and constructive feedback from its members. Young supporters may want to feel that their ideas are valued and that there is room within the EFF for honest discussion. With the political landscape in South Africa continuously evolving, maintaining this balance could be essential for the EFF to keep growing as a major player in the nation's politics. In conclusion, this incident involving the expulsion of a member highlights some important questions for the EFF and its supporters. Should a political party prioritize unity at all costs, or should it allow more space for internal debate? Can a system like democratic centralism be adapted to accommodate new voices without compromising the party's strength? As the EFF heads toward its National People's Assembly, these questions will likely continue to be a point of discussion both within and outside the party. The EFF's approach to discipline, loyalty, and dissent will play a significant role in shaping its future and in determining whether it can maintain its position as a prominent voice for economic transformation in South Africa. If you found this analysis interesting, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and stay updated with more insightful discussions on politics and current events. Let us know in the comments what you think about this issue. Do you believe the EFF should allow more space for differing opinions within its ranks, or is the current model of leadership essential for the party's access? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and share this video with others interested in South African politics.